Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be exploring the fascinating history of Angkor Wat after the Kingdom of Cambodia shifted its capital to the south and explore what happened in the city in the subsequent centuries. Thank you for visiting my channel and I hope you enjoy the video. The collapse of Angkor, traditionally attributed to the year 1431 when neighboring Ayutthaya attacked the city, is now understood to be a more complex process according to archaeological research. Rather than a sudden and definitive end, Angkor's decline involved multiple organizational transformations over time. One significant factor that contributed to the Khmer Kingdom's decision to relocate its capital from Angkor to the south was the increasing importance of maritime trade with China in the late 14th century. Unlike the flourishing cities situated in the southern regions, Angkor's inland location hindered its ability to actively engage in maritime commerce. Consequently, the burgeoning economic opportunities stemming from trade with China exerted significant pressure on Southeast Asia's existing economic and political structures, necessitating their reorganization. While historical records attribute the collapse of Angkor to a single event in 1431, Modern archaeological research indicates that the city's decline was a gradual process marked by numerous organizational changes. There is also some indication that the period witnessed prolonged drought, which was a contributing factor to the decline of Angkor in prominence. The city's economy is primarily agricultural and relied on a massive water network, which included large water storage tanks called bare, as well as canals, dikes, and small ponds that manage annual monsoon water. Archaeologists have found that several canals show evidence for excessive water that likely destroyed infrastructure in flooded residential areas. Alternating periods of drought and heavy rain would have stressed the highly sophisticated water systems of Angkor and contributed to a population decline around the 14th century. Despite these difficulties, evidence suggests that Angkor was never completely abandoned following the events of 1431. Carvings discovered at the site indicate that sculptors hailing from Ayutthaya resided in Angkor during the 15th century. Historical records corroborate this finding, revealing that Ayutthaya maintained control over the city during this time period, at least for a few decades. It is worth noting that while Ayutthaya is commonly associated with present-day Thailand, it would be inaccurate to characterize Ayutthaya as solely Thai during the 15th century. Due to Ayutthaya's historical connection to the Khmer Empire, Many Khmer officials were integrated into the Ayutthaya royal court, and elements of elite culture heavily drew inspiration from Angkor. Furthermore, Khmer people also continued to live in parts of Ayutthaya, and Khmer continued to serve as the official language for written documents during this time. Further archaeological evidence supports the notion that Angkor remained inhabited during the 14th to at least the 16th century. The presence of well-maintained and modified moats and water canals in the surrounding region indicates ongoing human activity and a sizable population. But even more interesting is that the walls of Angkor bear a remarkable collection of over 30 inscriptions inscribed in the Khmer language. These inscriptions date between 1541 and 1747 and provide valuable historical records of various events, including significant pilgrimages by prominent individuals as well as Buddhist ceremonies. These writings shed light on the evolving nature of Angkor and its transformation into a revered Buddhist temple and a site of pilgrimage by at least the 16th century. One of these inscriptions date to the 18th century and is attributed to a Khmer court dignitary which references the installation of a stupa on the east side of Angkor. This inscription signifies the continued importance and religious significance of the site during that period. Furthermore, in the 16th century, King Ang Chan demonstrated his political legitimacy as an heir to Suryavarman II, the esteemed founder of Angkor Wat, by installing Buddhist sculptures within Angkor. These actions illustrate how Angkor retained its cultural and spiritual significance even after its decline from political prominence in the 15th century. The significance of Angkor Wat as a Buddhist pilgrimage site can be traced back to King An 
Ang Chang's visit in 1546. Following Ang Chan was his grandson, King Sata, who reigned in 1579. An inscription from that year shows that King Sata continued his grandfather's legacy by repairing the temple's roof and consecrating holy relics in honor of seven generations of the royal family. These actions reflect the deep reverence and religious devotion associated with Angkor Wat. From the 16th century onwards, a tradition emerged where Khmer kings, royals, and elites made donations of Buddhist images to Angkor Wat as a means to accumulate merit. Also during this time period, there is recorded at least two Europeans who did visit Angkor Wat in the early modern period. In 1585, the Portuguese Capuchin friar Antonio da Magdalena visited Angkor Wat and provided a detailed description of the temple. He marveled at its grandeur and expressed that words could not adequately capture its magnificence. Similarly, in the 17th century, the Spanish Dominican friar Domingo Fernandez Navaret visited Angkor Wat and was equally impressed by its construction. These first hand accounts from European travelers bear witness to the exceptional architectural splendor of the temple and the continued importance of Angkor Wat within the Kingdom of Cambodia. The oldest known map of Angkor Wat dates back to 1715 and provides a valuable insight into the temple's historical significance. This map appears to be based on an earlier map created by Shimano Kenryo, a Japanese interpreter from Nagasaki. It is believed that Kenryo visited Angkor prior to 1636, a period when several Japanese pilgrims were making their way to the temple, as discussed in a previous video on this channel. Kenryo's visit was undertaken at the behest of Tokugawa Iemitsu, who specifically instructed him to visit Jetavana. Interestingly, it wasn't until 1910 that the map of Angkor created by Kenryo was identified. The map was originally titled Jion Shoja, referring to the Jetavana Monastery in India. It appears that during this visit to Angkor, Kenryo mistook the temple for the Jetavana, and this misidentification persisted among many Japanese pilgrims as well. This confusion was substantiated by the accounts of Diego Aduarte, a Dominican friar who reported that several Japanese pilgrims had indeed been visiting Angkor during the early 17th century. One of the most significant inscriptions at Angkor is the Grand Inscription de Angkor, dating back to 1707. This inscription documents the return of a Khmer dignitary named Che Non to Angkor, driven by a desire to accomplish a meritorious act. Che Non's personal tragedy is recorded within the inscription as he mourns the loss of his two sons on the battlefield and the death of his wife, which left him profoundly saddened. To honor his family, he erected a stupa near the entrance of the Eastern Gallery and inscribed a 53-line poem on the walls of Angkor. This poem pays homage to the Buddha and various deities, seeking their blessings and concluding with a devotional plea for a better afterlife. Furthermore, Che Non even chose to bury the remains of his children and his wife within the temple complex. This evidence challenges the notion that Angkor Wat was lost to Southeast Asia, as it is commonly believed. While the French adventurer Henri Mouho is Henri often credited with rediscovering Angkor Wat during his visit to Cambodia in the 1860s, Historical and archaeological evidence indicate that the temple was well known throughout Southeast Asia and even reached distant lands like Japan and China long before Muho's arrival. Muho's travel journals and writings certainly contributed to popularizing the site among Western audience, but the belief that he solely discovered Angkor Wat is an embellishment. For centuries following the relocation of Cambodia's capital by the Khmer kings, Angkor Wat remained an important Buddhist pilgrimage site and religious structure for people throughout the region. The presence of various inscriptions, including the Grand Inscription de Angkor and Signs of Restoration, indicate that the temple was never completely abandoned. Its enduring significance as a center of religious devotion and pilgrimage is attested by the continued reverence and care shown towards the site over the years and into the present. I want to thank you again for visiting my channel and watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and please consider liking and subscribing. 
Also, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.